Natalie, how are you? Um, is it happening? Is it going live on LinkedIn? I I see some live. I don't know if it's LinkedIn. Okay, Preeksha, uh, will you all will you check Preeksha and Pankti? Will you check? It should be going live on all three actually all right three now. Should be going live, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ma'am. I'll check it once. Yeah. I'm not got a LinkedIn notification. I've got YouTube. You got YouTube? I mean Facebook. So you got Facebook? Okay. Just check on all three, please. Okay. Ah, uh, LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn is out. Very good. So Facebook is 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 done. LinkedIn is done. Somebody check YouTube. Pankti, will you check? Oh uh, yes, Pankti. Yeah, YouTube is also working. Yeah, it's it's working. Fantastic, fantastic. Ah, uh, are you going to be speaking about your fetch in the beginning first? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And uh, Nicole says that she doesn't want to do, um. This one, uh, she wasn't doesn't want to do the my captain thing in the beginning, right? You, you don't want to do. Yeah, that. you can talk about AFH indirectly. A uh, start of it. I'll talk a little bit about my captain also. I'll just bring it in. Yeah, you can just say it's collaborate with my captain. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do. Also, uh, Malvika, will you be only will you only be taking the audience Q and A? So Or since it's not a webinar, we don't have the Q and A box thing. So I, I think Jaita sent me some questions that were on Telegram. So I'm gonna ask those first. Okay. Um and then if people want, you can ask them to send questions in the chat, and I I can ask them out. But in okay. case I have technical difficulties, I've sent you the questions prepared, yeah. and also like you can just step yeah. In. Just in case there's some question which is sort of there, and you know we're not uh, able to address it, then we might as well uh, uh, you know you might as well just give her a ping saying hey this is something which is there. So Malvika, you might want to tell her whether you want the ping to be uh, on your. Mobile or whether you want it on your personal chat. Sorry, I wasn't on mute. I would prefer Zoom chat, but um, chat oh, it's so like I'm I'm disabled. I can't message anyone except for my captain. No, no, we'll give you uh, make we'll me host. Uh huh. Co-host. Co-host. Yeah. Make make Malvika co-host. Yeah, yeah, I want. And keep Nicole also co-host anyway. Nicole is co-host. Yeah. You can make if me. If there is too many like things in the chat, then WhatsApp me. But I would prefer Zoom otherwise. Oh. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome. Manisha is also there. Uh, I'm just going to do a setting where I uh, don't allow anyone to unmute themselves. So I think the co-host will be able to unmute. Okay, so that way participants can't speak during the webinar. So you also have to make um, Manisha host then co-host. Co-host, yeah. Okay. Uh, the host can make. So uh, Shishti will have to make. Ah, uh, Shishti will have to make. Yeah. Oh yeah. What? What? Yourself, Shishti. Ah, uh, just make Manisha co-host. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just give lots of people co-host. Oh so wait, hold on. Entering, yeah. Are you still connecting to audio? Yeah. You change the ID that was logging in. The older one left. Ah, there she is. Hi. You're on mute. Hi, guys. Hi, hi, hi! Wonderful, wonderful to see you. Thank you so much like for joining us. Nice see you. <laughs> you look as fresh as ever, even on a Friday evening. <laughs> We were all eagerly waiting for this. So yeah, our our finance spotlight month comes to an end today with you. Oh, really? Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so how you want this to be about forty-five minutes? How do you want to do this? Um. So you tell us what's a good time for you. We wanted we wanted it to be actually one hour, so forty five minutes of Q and A, and then a little bit of uh, sorry, forty five minutes of just Q and A with between you and Malvika with with all the questions that you got from the community in general, and then yeah. uh, any Q and A which typically comes by and you know here on the group itself, uh, we'll okay. spend fifteen minutes doing that. Is what we thought. Perfect. Sounds good. So I'm just going to adjust this.
Elshita, Vatsal, hi. Alvika, you might want to just get people to know each other a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's, uh, it's a need to unmute everyone, right? Yeah, uh, I don't have the, uh, the ability chat box. to unmute them. If we can they can just introduce themselves on the chat, I think. If you uh, can yeah. just tell us yeah, where you all are uh, where you all are from and what you're doing. Uh yeah. that would be nice, yeah. Um, yeah, if you can see where everyone's like joining in from which city or even college or whatever, um, that would be great. Just because we have around two, three minutes to start. So we'll wait for more people to join in. Yeah, typically people take about three, four minutes, Manisha, before they come in, but... Uh, yeah, of course, of course. We can wait, no worries. For, yeah, just wait for about five minutes or so. It's a Friday evening anyways. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's only in these COVID days that, you know, uh, in, in Friday evenings, we've actually... Actually, our 6.30 slot is good because we realize that uh, that's the time that, uh, uh, you know, people are just finishing college and anyway... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Days, Fridays, you can't really go, go out anywhere. Correct. So. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere. It looks can't. like it's... Yeah. Yeah. All the cities are getting bad again, right? I mean, not just in India, everywhere. Everywhere. Mm. Everywhere. Yeah. And people are getting tired. Malvika. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Malvika, where do you live? I'm in Bombay. Um, and oh, great. I mean, I study in the US, but I'm here right now for this semester. Um, yeah, and I study online, online, right? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm planning to go back to next semester. But yeah, I'm sure you're fed up of doing like uh, school in the night and all that's exhausting, right? Yeah, today I also woke up at like 11 or 12. I slept at 5. Yeah. So oh I'm my God. Very done with this. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> How how was your week, Manisha? Uh, did you did you uh, sort of do you see some some hope in life in the economy or no? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think look, uh, India sort of decided that the economy takes priority, and people have you know companies have opened up, factories have opened up, demands come back. So I think it's it's um, we come back much faster rather than we thought it it would. Right, uh, six months ago when you and I spoke, things were right. really down and out. Really so bad. I think things, yeah, I think uh, I'm feeling far more optimistic. That is the best thing that I heard this week. <laughs> <laughs> but still a long way to go. Still a long way to go. Of course. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen next week also. With Correct. Election. Yeah. With of US course. elections, yeah. Of oh course. my God. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> if anything's as exciting as Indian elections, it's it's the US elections, right? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. I think this time, because the, the whole situation is so bizarre, yeah, Correct. Uh, yeah. You know, everybody is just absolutely waiting with bated breath. <laughs> no, no one really knows, right? I mean, uh, until, until the very end, one doesn't know that whether we'll be actually uh, sort of, uh, you know, going by the predictions or something else is going to happen. Correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's going to be pulled out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. It's politics is a sport too, right? We're all watching it and... and Oh yes, big sport. Yes. It's a big yes. sport. Big sport. <laughs> and if, <laughs> if Mr. Trump has his way, then it can also become a contact sport. I think. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'm not going to give up power easily or something." Correct. Like that. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You don't know if he's losing. I don't know what he'll do. It's pretty scary. <laughs> pretty scary, actually. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. But a lot of people joining in. Yeah, a lot of people are joining in. So, might, so we'll so, wait for like a minute or two, and then yeah, we can maybe start. A minute or two, yeah. Maybe. So this was really very eagerly awaited, uh, Manisha, by a set of people who really think that uh, if you're in finance, then you have to be in investment banking. And yes. <laughs> so <laughs> let me not disillusion them. Let me say it's a, it's a great place to be. <laughs> <laughs> even, even to me, it is okay. I have always been on the less glamorous side of banking all my life. So. <laughs> it's good. It's good where you are. Trust me, this is, is one of those... This is one of those high stakes game, right? <laughs> is, but yeah, I mean, I think it's exciting. I think, you know, I, I say that, but all in all, it's a great journey, right? I mean, it's, it's the, what the exposure it gives you, the thrill it gives you. It's, it's, yeah. I, I mean, I, I love it. It's, it's not for everyone, but I think 
you have to yeah. take a close look at yourself and see whether you want to do this or not it's not for the weak hearted yeah i think that's the that's the uh, very important message that that will probably go in today as well uh yeah, yeah. sure that's true. you have a oh. lot of people who are coming in K- kashmira uh, is that you kashmira is one of our newest mentors i think uh, she has joined in today as well she wanted to get a feel of how this webinar goes <laughs> i think Hi, kashmira <laughs> Hey Kashmira. Welcome. Wow, we have a lot of people coming in now. But yeah, continuing on the investment banking thing, I think that's what a lot of people want to know today, what um what you need to have to be in it. I myself yeah. honestly was like asking that question, have been asking that question for the last 3 years of college. But um <laughs> Oh, you you you've done 3 years? So you're in your final year? So in, no, no, I'm in my junior year, so third year. Oh, you're um, a junior. Third so I guess year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2 years. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah so i'm studying economics and data science so oh nice uh, nice it's the best combination yeah. well done well done Marika. <laughs> but figuring it out and being where i am i think it's a lot of people getting into finance so yeah yeah of course it always it always has that appeal right as you know so oh she can't unmute herself ah okay because she's not the setting i think So this yeah. time we're trying something special for uh, for for your webinar, Manisha, which is we're doing <laughs> live simultaneously on all the three social media platforms. So oh wow, nice. We are, we are usually <laughs> usually with with great difficulty we manage to go live on one, but yeah. uh, but our girls are that way. You know they are they're very very tech savvy. So they said you know what is this? We should be live on and definitely with Manisha we should go live on LinkedIn. These and girls are so they are so they are so with it on technology, right? Unlike you and me, it's an acquired yeah, habit know. for us. For them, it's like natural, right? As my I daughter know. says, it devastates me when you and dad talk about technology. Please don't talk about it. So <laughs> I get. it i get it is the same with malvika and all these people they're born to it right yeah, they just born to it they're natives yeah, they're born so, to it they're so, natives yeah. exactly you yeah. can't we can't match them yeah, yeah. no no i don't <laughs> even try that's why yeah, i yeah, want yeah. to aspire Correct. for her you know all their social media and all of that is completely done by them um, and that that's why i think it's also uh, you know very fresh and uh, it's very young <laughs> it's not like you and me speaking to anybody <laughs> So, you know, like you have at the back, your aspire. We at Molis have a we, uh, we we have a screen saver, Molis and Company. So I have fired my entire team and said, "What is this for? All client meetings, we must have it." Now they all have it, and right. six months into it, I still haven't figured out how to get it because I'm so <laughs> dependent on you know my office, everyone, Nachi, my life, my assistant to do it. So I'm the only one left without it, and no one's telling me that was you were the one who told us get this. And they 24 hours later, they all had it, and I'm still sitting like this. <laughs> So, so Natalie is here. I think a warm welcome to Natalie as well. I did see her some time back, and thank you yeah, so much for see. all the hard work. I think she yeah. managed hard work for the last twenty for twenty five years. She's amazing. I What? am more. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, I worked for twenty five, and I think twenty years Natalie has been with me. So she's my. I can't move without her. Wow! Wow! <laughs> That is so amazing. Yeah, she's That... she's really my backbone. <laughs> that is so amazing you know wonderful wonderful i mean we want to aspire for her uh, you know space to also be something like that where people come in and then they build a relationship for life and course, uh, you know yeah, they they yeah. become mentors, very important you know yeah i mean very I important that. must carry your people along with you right yeah. we are we are only with what we are because of all the our teams right absolutely 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 so i'm hoping that people like malvika and uh, so so many people who joined here uh, they were all uh, sort of uh, you know become mentors uh, you know yeah they, absolutely and, they have to give back we all have to give back absolutely we all have to give back they all have to give back and that's the important part so we we've, we've had a you know very exciting month in fact manisha so we touched a community size of 17000 i saw that that's yeah, congratulations so that's yeah. fabulous amazing <laughs> so that, that i liked uh, what somebody said that there's going to soon going to be a movie on you called super 30 so oh, i'm okay. i <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> no. In fact, the other day we were having a conversation with somebody in Spain, and yes. uh, so uh, and she is actually an English woman, and uh, so she, you know, obviously there in those countries the numbers are much smaller, right? Yes. So she somehow assumed that aspired for her had been uh, there for the last ten years. When I was talking <laughs> to her about what we are doing, and you know, oh, we do this and we do that, and we have mentoring and we have that. So Sneha and Ija were there with me, and uh, I said, uh, yeah, I mean, this is what we do. 
and then uh, suddenly in one conversation that came out that we are there only for seven months and we have, <laughs> we have 17,000 people and she literally just like, what, what? She, she felt that, and that's when this whole movie thing came about <laughs> I but think it's great, it's right? It's also like because it's, I yeah. think uh, we need platforms like this. The more we can empower women, the better, right? I think no. India needs that. So it's great. I think you, so, you're doing a great job. Uh, that's, it's fabulous what you're doing. Thank and you're doing you. it with it's heart amazing. and soul and love and tears. Like I know that from yeah. all the WhatsApps I see. So it's well done. So thank you so much. It's only for people like you and all the motivation that I get uh, from the mentors and the members that I know I can do it. You know, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's been a wonderful journey. Last seven months has been a wonderful journey. So I yeah. think Malika, we open can start. Your yeah, we can start. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention we have around fifty people joining, and I'm sure more will. Um, yes. And we have people all from Bombay, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Delhi, Pune. I can see in the chat people have introduced themselves. So hi everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, and we have someone very special with us to end our finance month um, this October. And we have Manisha Girotra, of course, as you might have been seeing in the last 10 minutes of this meeting. Uh, and we're really grateful to you for joining us today. Um, before I introduce her, um, would Madhra ma'am like to uh, just give a bit of a brief about Aspire for her and my captain as well? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Malvika. A warm welcome to all of you. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, when I started talking to people uh, uh, who were aiming and aspiring for finance careers, a lot of you came back saying that investment banking was your dream career and that's where you wanted to be. Uh, so that's why we thought that we should end the finance month with somebody really special like Manisha Girotra. Uh, when I spoke to Manisha, uh, you know, a few months back now, it seems like a long time ago, uh, she was so uh, supportive of Aspire for her uh, that it really made me feel very good. And she has always been supportive. The minute I told her that we need to have you here for a webinar, uh, she sort of managed her calendar and she ensured that she was here for all of you. Uh, so thank you so much, Manisha. It's a pleasure and honor to welcome you to our platform. Uh, and uh, we have had, as I said, a very, very exciting month, a very, very exciting last seven months, in fact. Uh, it's been a very fascinating journey to grow Aspire for her. Uh, as all of you know that we are a platform uh, primarily meant for 18 to 25 year old women. We want to motivate them to pursue awesome careers like Manisha. Uh, and um, so we encourage you to sign up as members uh, or if, you, if, you, if you're not 18 to 25 and if you're not a woman, then you're most welcome uh, to sign up as a supporter uh, and just be a part of this wonderful cause. This is India's trillion dollar opportunity. And if you want to get our economy back on track, we have to get more women working. Uh, so once again, warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we are very, very grateful that my captain uh, uh, does this wonderful partnership with us. And this collaboration has been almost as, uh, as old as aspired for her. Uh, and uh, there, there we see Nicole there from my captain. Uh, they often get very young professionals who talk about what life is going to be like after you just leave college. Uh, so while Manisha's uh, journey is going to be a little high level, uh, she will give us the balcony view, but the dance floor view is normally given by the captains from my captain. So uh, that's how we that's how we roll. Uh, thank you very much to my captain as well. And uh, Malika, over to you. Uh, Manisha, thank you so much once again. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce Manisha a little bit, though I'm sure she doesn't even need an introduction. Uh, and then we can move on to some questions we have prepared. And then we'll have Q&A with the audience later in the end. So please drop your questions in the chat box as we move along. So um, to introduce Manisha, she is the CEO of Moralist India. Uh, she has more than 25 years of investment banking experience with extensive cross-border M&A ex expertise in a lot of industries. And before joining Moilis uh, India, she was the country head for UBS in India, another major investment bank. Um, and there she was heading commercial bank, market markets, equity research and wealth management divisions. And before UBS, she was yet in, a, in another amazing investment bank called Barclays. Uh, and she was the North India head for Barclays India. Uh, she started her career in investment banking at ANZ Grindleys in London. Uh, she's also been Business Today's 25 Most Powerful Women in Business in India and for the past six years, and also Fortune India's 50 Most Powerful Women in Business, not just India, in 2014 and 15. So we are really, really grateful to have you here today, and for, thank you for taking the time out on a Friday evening to join us. 
um, and a bit about educational background because that's kind of where our first question is headed. Um, Ms. Girotra holds a degree from St. Stephen's College and received a gold medal for her master's degree from Delhi School of Economics. So the first question that we have is, um, you studied economics and how did you get into finance? Uh, because that's, I guess, where a lot of the women in our community are. So they, they're exploring finance and what was, your, what was your journey and if you had any struggles. Sure. Thanks, Malvika. Uh, the, so really, I think that is the most pertinent question for investment banking as to what educational qualifications you need. I didn't technically have the right qualifications because in India, investment bankers are all MBAs or CAs. I was an economist. I was I did my, as you said, my economics from undergrad from St. Stephen's and then Delhi School of Economics. I was actually an accidental banker. I wanted to either go and do a PhD. I didn't have the money. My father didn't have the resources. So I thought I'd earn money for two, three years. Investment banking seemed like a good place to make some money and then basically go out and do what I wanted to do. And I was passionate about my father. On the other hand, was very keen. I joined the civil services. So banking really didn't fit in anywhere. But, you know, I joined it and I think it was I fell in love with it. Uh, while I was an accidental banker, I really fell in love with it. And here I am 28 years later. I think you can only be in a career 28 years on if you really love what you do. So uh, for me, I think, um, and, I, I, and, you know, more so for all of you, I think uh, not having a fine, uh, uh, MBA degree really made things complex because it was actually I was in the first two years doing two jobs. I was working nine to nine in my career. And after that, I came home and I had to study corporate finance books because I didn't know what it was. I didn't even know what a balance sheet looked like. I'd never seen one. I didn't know the left-hand side and right-hand side of a balance sheet. I didn't know how things added up, stacked up in, in corporate balance sheets. So it was as challenging as that because I had to learn everything on the job while at the same time perform. I don't think, you know, uh, jobs give you, the, uh, give you the benefit that you can learn for six months and then come back. So it was extremely challenging. Uh, much it, anyway, when you start off as an analyst in investment banking, for all of you who have friends in it or seniors in it, they'll tell you it's a very hard career. Uh, but in my case, it was just a double journey. It was just, you know, 24 times seven, one had to be switched on to basically come up to speed with my other peers. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much for that answer. And that gives us a really good insight into how, how much hard work goes into this career. So uh, another additional follow-up question to this is, uh, being a woman in banking is not as, you know, it's a male-dominated -dominate, do industry. So, and especially 25 years ago, I'm sure things were even worse than they are right now. So were there any challenges you faced uh, having to prove yourself just because you were a woman and you were also learning on the job? And how did you overcome those struggles? And even across the last 25 years? So huge challenges, as you said, investment banking uh, is, is a basically male dominated uh, business, not only is investment banking, but the clients you're dealing with basically in manufacturing and companies are mostly men. So it's very difficult to prove yourself. I remember initially when I would go into meetings, people wouldn't sh make eye contact with me, wouldn't shake hands with me because it was just what is this animal doing in this meeting, right? Because everyone else was a man other than me. So very difficult initially uh, to, you know, prove yourself, credentialize yourself. You had to try harder and you really had to be skinned because, you know, there were people who weren't really speaking to you, even though even when I was speaking to someone like I am to you, Malvika, the person would be looking at someone else. So, you know, that's very disheartening as a youngster because you sort of worked all night, prepared the presentation, got the financial model going, but people are actually really not are wondering how to, uh, deal with you. And I think now when I look back, I realized the men in the room were also having a paradigm shift because they were not used to having women in banking. They were used to seeing women as secretaries, journalists, you know, support staff. I don't think they were used to seeing women in hardcore finance. So there was a paradigm shift happening for everyone. So I think that itself was very challenging. You actually needed a lot of grit and determination to just stay in there and keep proving yourself. Then, of course, comes the usual stuff that, you know, a woman is not going to stay on. She's going to get married. She's just looking for a good groom and she's going to move away or she's going to have her kids and move away. Every time there was that thing that, you know, is she just here for two years? Is she just here for three years? So and, and along with that came objectivi objectification, trivialization. You know, a lot of that stuff came when a lot of things which today, you, you know, you just can't say or do, you know, you could get away with because you didn't really have diversity communities inside organizations or HR policies geared towards women. In fact, I remember a few, one, a few of the initial meetings I went to, you didn't even have a women's toilet in some of these companies' offices because they just weren't used to seeing women, you know. Uh, they, you probably had to go into the basement to go into the women's toilet. So it was as difficult as that. And I think you just had to brace yourself every morning, shake it off, not take it too seriously and say, look, the onus is on me to prove myself every day. 
and to show with tenacity and hard work that I am here to stay. I will be taken seriously over time. You know, it, it, it's harder than the others. When, when you start off as a youngster, anyway, it's harder because in our, in especially in the Indian ecosystem, age is really given a lot of benefit. You know, we respect age over anything else over, over youth. So anyway, as a youngster, when you start off, it's hard. And as a woman, it just was doubly harder. And, you know, I think it's the first point I made to you, Malvika, that I loved what I did so much that it made the journey easier for me because I was like, I just have to do this. This is what I want to do. I'm lucky and blessed to have found a career in the first shot that I love. And I wanted to stay on. And that's what really helped me keep, uh, you know, overcome all these challenges. But challenges for women even now remain, Malvika. It hasn't changed. It's better because a lot of organizations have realized that they need to hire women. Hiring women is not just good diversity policy. It's good for the business. Uh, but having said that, I still think it's just a, is just a token uh, tick mark, right? Just hire one woman or one girl. And, you know, that's why platforms like what Matra are doing are very important because, you know, we need more women to come in. Not you know, The woman shouldn't be the outlier. It shouldn't be a tick in the box. It should be 50%, 60% of the team force. Completely agreed because you have to draw the line between how you have to understand how companies are, are they actually enforcing these diversity and inclusion policies or are they just doing it for, you know, getting it on their, uh, to, like, you know, post it on social media. Yeah. Um, so, and it's clearly paid off for you, the grit and determination you put in. So uh, I guess the next question is, after more than 25 years in investment banking, could you tell us how it has changed and what you think uh, a young person starting their career now should look out for in terms of changes to the finance industry as a whole? And I'm sure there's a lot of changes coming uh, just with how 2020 has been. So just for finance students, if they're interested in knowing what to look out for. So, you know, Malika, there's an old saying which says the more things change, the more they remain the same. So the principles of investment banking remain the same. It's about, you know, having a good degree, studying hard, working hard, you know, and re really figuring out whether this is a career you want to do, because at the end of the day, it's a gladiator sport. It's fairly solo. You win and you lose, lose every day. So you need to figure out these things, whether you want to do. And that hasn't changed from 28 years ago, because if you're bracing yourself for a career which requires such long hours, which requires intense in uh, studying and you know evaluation of balance sheets or businesses which requires you not only to do that but to network in, in the first two years of your business you could be dealing with ceos etc you know you need to uh, introspect and see if you have that kind of dna do you have the confidence do you have the in it you to take initiative that's the most important thing uh, you know to, to work as a team player all those things you need to introspect so i don't think that's changed I think what's changed, as you said, Malvika, is technology, right? And technology has worked. So, for example, when I started my career, there were eight to 10 industries. Once you'd figured out how they work, whether it was cement, whether it was steel, whether it was IT, whether it was hotels, hospitality, you'd figure that out. And there was a standard business model. Now, for all of you, it's so hard because of technology. Business models are getting disrupted, right? I mean, an OYO becomes an aggregator, changes the whole hotel model. A Make My Trip comes in, changes the whole travel model. So many new business models are coming so for all of you you basically have to learn on the job continuously you have to learn unlearn and learn i mean each one of you they say is going to have three careers in your lives right so you have to be so nimble for me if once i'd acquired my skills if i kept myself fairly upgraded on those skills and it was fine but i think for all of you it's really hard just because the way business is changing right i mean with fintech coming are banks going to remain the way they are my dad's a career banker. I remember everyone who used to come and meet him and say, branch manager ko milne ja rahe. Then came us, us, our generation where, you know, you did banking by ATM. Then it's your generation, which is just going to do everything on the smartphone, right? So I think things are changing so rapidly that for you people, I think it's much harder and you have to continuously keep reinventing yourself and you have to think in your mind, are you that kind of person? Are you the kind of person who is not overawed by the fact that, you know, every five years business model is going to change and the whole industry may look very differently. So if you're that kind of person, you love it, you know, you love the roller coaster, right? Then yes, investment banking is for you. If not, then maybe you want to think again. That's really good career insights. And I don't think I've heard anyone really say that to me in such clear, plain words. So thank you for that. And I'm sure everyone feels the same. So I guess the next question, because leading into what you just said is, what is the life of a young investment banker like? Like if we could have a complete clear answer on that, because I think investment banking has become like a buzzword among students, but a lot of people just don't know what it means. So what, what do you do as a young investment banker? So look, it's it's very hard, right? Uh, so let's take the the the, hard, the first bit is the hard work, right? You have to brace yourself to be sitting long hours behind a computer, pouring over balance sheets, pouring over data, pouring over doing the financial analysis and presenting that to your seniors. 
So that's the bit, that's the hard work. The, the, the upside to all of this is that in investment banking, I think, I don't think in any other career, Malvika, you go, you meet people right at the top of the organization so early in your careers, right? Right, because you're doing things which are transformational for a company, whether it's a merger, it's an acquisition, it's fundraising. This is basically things which a CEO, a C, CFO or a promoter of a company looks at. So two years into, the, into your career, you could be meeting some of the biggest entrepreneurs in, in your life and that's that's exhilarating so that's the upside right because you just your exposure is so much it's the earlier point we were making on learning imagine the kind of learning you're doing because you're sitting across a person who's you know built a built an airline business by himself or built a hotel business by himself and you're sitting there you're asking him questions on you know how do you run your business how do you run your financial analysis because he's answering it to you because you're going to prepare the data for him to then go and do the fundraising and that's the kind of exposure you get so that's exhilarating but but please be aware that it doesn't come without a huge amount of grind. The grind, the hard work, the long hours, the tenacity, as I keep saying, is, is really put to test in this career uh, for the first two to three years. It keeps getting easier as you go senior uh, in terms of hours. Then, then you basically have to go out there and become the hunter and bring out the business, bring the business, et cetera. So the role changes. Uh, but what what I think the hours probably get a little easier. The other thing is it's very erratic, right? I mean, if there's a live merger, there's a live acquisition, there's a live fundraising, you will work through weekends, you will work through nights and you will take flights at short notice, right? I mean, do you like doing that? Some people love doing that. If that's something that's up your DNA and you know, you're willing to brace yourself and say, look, I'm going to make this investment for three years because I know it gets better and it's something that I love doing and you know, love being a part of then do it. Uh, but I think those are, those are the broad things. It's a lot of hard work, but I, I promise you it's a lot of fun. I think what you, what you are able to do as a young person at, in your early 20s in investment banking, there are very few other careers that offer you that. Yeah, um, one of our questions was really what qu kind of qualities you, you should have or you think people should have uh, if they want to get into this career. But I think you've answered parts of that in all of your uh, answers. So I, I, we'll move on to another question. So financial independence is one of our main objectives at AFH. Um, and what does financial, being financially independent mean to you? And um, clearly you achieved that and you said that you didn't have much and that's why it led you to banking um, and now you're at this top position. So what does being financially financially independent as a woman mean to you? And what message do you have for the girls at AFH? I think it's most important. Financial independence for me is freedom, right? It's just equals freedom. For me, I want to live life on my own terms. And for that, for that to happen, I must be financially independent. There should be no one in my ecosystem, my parents, my husband, my in-laws that I should be dependent on. Because if I want to take a holiday, if I want to do, live a life, my life in a certain way, I shouldn't be questioned. And if you are financially dependent, it, invariably questions will happen, will come. So for me, it's, it's really important. And it's the one thing that I think my, my mom taught me and I want to you know, pass on to my daughter that you must be financially independent. Then how you, your life journey takes you, et cetera, is different. But you must be able to do what you want to because you're, you're and, and not be able to do something that you don't want to because you're not financially independent. It's, it's the single most important thing in my life, Malvika, and I think it stood me very well. Completely agree. Um, and I know we spoke a little bit about networking earlier. So what advice do you have to young people for networking now? Because sometimes I feel, again, like, it just becomes a token and people just want to like meet senior people and say something and introduce themselves directly. And it's become very impersonal at a point, after a point, they just think that they're going to network for a job and you have to network even within our AFH community. We have so many amazing mentors. Um, and when you connect to a mentor, you're not going to them for a job. So what advice do you have to young people for networking and how we should go about it? So I think networking is very important, not just, as you said, Malika, you can't see it as a means to just an end that you know, if I network, I'll get a good job. No, you should network for all the other things that come with it, right? You network through this community, as you said, you meet really interesting people, you know, you meet people who are doing other jobs and careers and you may, you know, in the, at this stage of your life, you may decide that, look, this career looks more interesting. Maybe I want to, uh, you know, think a little bit about that rather than just unidimensionally think about finance or, you know, a, a path which just goes into equities, research, investment banking, maybe something that the other person's doing in terms of being an entrepreneur or in tech or something is seeming more interesting. 
Mentors are very useful if when you network, right, they, they can give you all their experience of 15, 20, 25 years. And, you know, trust me, all of that helps because, you know, now that I look back, I think I didn't have a mentor, but I think it, I would have gained enormously if I had someone who had, you know, the kind of experience that I have and, you know, could just give me some little bit of information on how things work and how, you know, don't take things too hard and, you know, don't get too stressed and things do work out and you know, all the things that young people get very worried about, I think. So I think for all of those reasons, you should network. And I think for your generation, networking has become easier for us at men going for, you know, after work to drinks with people and, you know, most women need to get back home, etc. For you, thanks to technology, you know, you can network very easily through LinkedIn, through you know, other social media platforms. You guys can, you know, actually network and build a build an absolutely good community around you. So you must do that. You must build that. And I think a community only lifts you up. So I'm all for networking. And especially because in your generation, it's become simpler to network, right? Because technology is giving you the tools that can you can sit at home and do, you know, meet, meet people who I, I would have had to go to, you know, several events in the evenings to go to. And, you know, I, I probably was constrained for safety reasons or for domestic reasons that I couldn't do. You can do it. And, and it benefits you in ways that you can't imagine. And, you know, life skills are very important too as you go up in your career path, right? It's not just, I have the degrees and that's fine. It, I think in life, in your job, your life skills matter much more than just your degrees. And I think through networking, you learn all of that. And you don't realize it, you learn by os osmosis and it stays with you then for the rest of your career. Yeah, it's definitely just another learning on the job uh, and acquiring soft skills. So another question is, uh, I'm sure holding top positions in Barclays, UBS and Moelis has not come with criticisms, come without its criticism from people in this industry. And it also comes with a lot of decision making. So is decision making something you learned on the job or is that something you felt like you innately always had? And what advice do you have to young people about making decisions in their career? So look, I think it came, as I said before, also, it, it came with a lot of criticism, right? I mean, right from the beginning, is she going to stay with the job? Is she serious about it? You know, did she just get lucky? Was it right time, right place? How did she become one of the youngest CEOs in investment banking at 32? You know, was it luck? Was it just, you know, as I said, right time, right place? But frankly, you know, Malvika, if you want the rainbow, the rain has to come with it, right? You have to put up with the rain. And I think that's how you have to brace yourself. You want to do this, you want the leadership position, you want to do investment banking, then look, there are people who are going to be critical about you. People are going to say, as my dad says, people are going to speak anyways, they're going to say something anyways. So you're going to get bogged down by everything that's said about you or written about you, you're not going to progress. So get a thick skin. Don't worry too much about it. Today's news is yes, you know, yesterday's news is today, as I say, today's news is tomorrow's trash. So just don't worry about it. Keep going, keep plugging on, believe in yourself. The most important thing is always believe in yourself. Even if you fail, you must believe in yourself because look, I am, at least I am today what I am more because of my mistakes than because of what I did right. And I think just believe in that. And you know, that's what you know, you know will make you a better leader because you know, you're able to make mistakes, get up, come back. So I think all of that is is what my life's um, learning has been. And I think you had another question, right, Malvika, uh, related to, sorry, you, ha you had a part B of the question. It was about decision-making in general. Uh, and yes, and yes. That came with it. So decision making is extremely important. I think, you know, in India, all of us, we are so, uh, we, because we live in these, you know, in a family which takes so much care of us as children, we all, all our decisions are taken by our parents, right? Right up to the time that, you know, who you're going to get married to is decided by our parents. So we don't, we don't, uh, as you know, cultivate decision, decision making as a muscle memory in our children from childhood, right? They're, what food they're going to eat, what color clothes they're going to wear, what clothes they're going to wear, who they're going to marry, what degrees they're going to do is a really consultative process in the family you know while it's great but I think at the same time uh, uh, you know each one of us must be allowed to make our own decisions so I think that's where Indians lack a lot if you ask me is, is the ability to make decisions as opposed to some of their western counterparts who at the age of 18 go out and you know fend for themselves uh, for me too I learned you know I think a I, I don't think I, I think I was allowed to make my own decisions from childhood you know what degrees I want to do what organization I want to join etc but I also cultivated it on the job you learn the you know you learn the hard way that you not only have to make your own decisions you have to own up your own as a leader you have to have ownership for the leaders even if the leaders are of your team some decisions are sometimes of your team you have to take ownership because you're eventually the leader so decision making and more importantly taking ownership for the decisions of your team is something that's critical that's what makes a good leader more than anything else because you know that's fine sometimes you can say this oh this was done by my team I didn't do it you know in front of a client or something great 
for that, you know, short term, you know, you're good with the client. But the reality is, will your team respect you later? They won't, right? They are, they are looking for someone who they can look up to, who can fend for them, right? Uh, and if you're not that kind of a leader, I don't think you can sustain that position for a long time. And, you know, it, 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 people, people won't respect you. People won't want to work for you because at the end of the day, investment banking is, you're not, you're not selling a product. It's a services business, right? And it's all about carrying the team along with you. And if you want to carry the team, lead from the front. Definitely. Leadership def comes with accountability. So um, another question about uh, just being in, at Moelis right now. So you are running an international investment bank in India. So given how different the two markets are, what are some differences in the process you implement, um, maybe if, the, if it is the case, uh, as compared to other Indian investment banks like ICICI or Kota or many others? And would it be a vastly different experience for a young professional to work in an in international investment bank in India or an Indian investment bank? Sure, Malvika. I think it's it's uh, different because you're working for a global firm, right? And you're seen as a global resource. So you will, uh, when your first two years of training happen, happens as a young investment bank, you'll probably go to New York or London or wherever the investment bank is centered. If it's a global bank to do your training, you'll be sent to international business schools to maybe, you know, pick up some certain soft skills, etc. courses on that. Uh, I think a domestic firm takes a different trajectory. A, def a domestic firm takes a trajectory which is most domestic centric, you know, looking to do IPOs, capital markets. And I think you have to decide as a person that do you want to build an India centric career or a more international career? If a more international career where you could potentially get posted to a Dubai or a London office or a Hong Kong office or an Australia office is something you, you like, then maybe go for a global firm, right? A lot of my colleagues in Molis and UBS from India now work in Dubai, work in London, work in New York, have come back and worked here. So they, they like the whole global career aspect. Some say, no, I think the India market is really big. I want to just stay invested here. I like being in my country. And then it's probably better to go into it and into a Kotak or a ICICI. It really depends on you as an individual, different trajectories. To some extent, the business may that we do may overlap, uh, but a large extent, it's also very different because Kotak ICICIs will tend to have a more domestic or domestic business model. Okay, that's really good advice and insight in general for everyone here. So uh, coming back to what we were speaking about in terms of Indian mentality, uh, of course, with the family decision making is one aspect. But I think um, at least not maybe maybe not for my generation, but a bit older, there's like a sort of mentality of being risk averse in terms of your career. And um, what do you think of that? And was that did that ever play into your decision making for choosing investment banking? Um, and just a bit about your experience about being risk averse or taking risks. Yeah, so I think, as you said, we are by nature risk averse, you know, uh, my to my, uh, till my parents' generation, they pretty much, you know, started in one job and ended in their careers in that one job, especially if they were in the government, etc. So we resist change by nature. Uh, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we must draw beyond the lines. We must push ourselves. We must reinvent ourselves. You know, when I, when I was in Barclays, as you said, and I joined UBS, people in India didn't know what UBS was. When I used to go into office and, and a lot of my jobs job at that time point was going to government offices. The secretaries thought I was, you know, the secretary sitting outside thought I was from UPS. UPS is a, was a courier company. So they're like, courier wali madam. That's how unknown UBS was as a brand. When I joined Molis, people didn't know how to say the word Molis. I could have continued doing the same, you know, job at UBS or gone to a more safer brand. But I decided, no, I want to push myself. I want to reinvent myself. And hence, you know, I was able to live life on my own terms because I continuously pushed myself. Was it easy? No. Especially was version 2.0 easy when I'd you know, done UBS for 20 years and then went and set up a new firm? No. But I think you, you, know, you only benefit and gain if you push yourself harder and, you know, and take more risk. And I think I've benefited from that enormously. And as you said, we, all of us in India must do that. You know, it's related to that, Malvika, is, the whole, is this whole fear to fail, right? It's a big stigma for us. Uh, and, uh, you know, we think in our mind that failure is terrible. If you speak to anyone globally, they'll say, oh, I lost my job because, you know, the company shut down or, you know, they were, they were shrinking or, you know, my business failed and I'm, I'm coming back. And actually it's seen as a positive because it's seen, okay, so this business failed, there are learnings this person has and he can put to work. While we feel very awkward saying all these things because, you know, we just don't, we, we see failure as a huge setback. And I think that's what makes us prevents us from taking risks. And I think we must change that. And your generation must change that. I think our generation stuck to the, you know, we stuck to the one line, but you must change that and you must push yourself because there are so many careers out there, so many options out there, and you will only 
find out if you explore. It's one thing to know from mentors, from platforms. It's another thing to try yourself. I mean, if you think you like entrepreneurship, go and try it for two years, right? Three years. Maybe it works. Great. If it doesn't work, you can always come back to a job. India and economy at you know three trillion is a big enough economy for all of you. So, so I do, I think don't worry. Push yourself hard. And don't listen to parents like us who'll tell you, no, now you've got a good job, stay in it. Say, no, I want to go into something else. <laughs> That's a perfect lead into my next question because my next, my, one of my last questions before we start taking audience questions is that many young people think that they have to know everything about the job before they start it. And of course, that was not the case for you, as you mentioned earlier. Um, while in contrast, there is so much learning on the job. So what are some things you learned along the way and how do you cope with maybe not being confident about a subject or a new product? Because I'm sure investment banking has dynamically changed over the last 25 years and you have to learn about new industries or products. So if, have you ever felt unconfident about something and how do you deal with that? Of course, you feel uh, nervous and unconfident all the time. You go into a new, to pitch for a new business, you know, you're a bit nervous. You're like, am I going to win it? I'm not, am I not going to win it? You lose business. You feel nervous about the next piece of business. Of course, it's always the case that you feel nervous. I mean, to say that you're 200% confident and, you know, if some team members leave, you feel terrible. You're like, how am I going to be able to be as effective in the business as I was if I lose two critical people in my team? Of course, these are things that make you nervous. And, you know, do you, do you acknowledge it? Yes, you acknowledge it. Do you some, do something about it? Yes, you do something about it. You know, but, and, but the only way you can keep doing it, Malvika, is that you just you keep upgrading your own skills, right? You, you be so confident about yourself and what you present as an option to the clients or the team that, you know, they, they feel excited about working with you or the client feels excited about working with you. So keep on investing in yourself. Learn, unlearn, learn. Build your own personal brand, most important, and especially in your generation through, you know, LinkedIn and all the other technology tools you have, you know, upgrade your brand, upgrade your brand to the extent that people want to hire you and want to work with you. And, you know, and, and that way you will gain more confidence as, you know, people reach out to you, people want your point of view, all these things, you know, you know the human mind then gets more confident and, and you push yourself harder. So, yeah, by all means, feel nervous at all times. Feel a little insecure. It's good because, you know, it keeps you, it keeps you on your toes. Success is a lousy teacher. It tells you to just sit back and relax and tells you you're the best. But you're not because there's always someone clawing at your end, wanting your job, wanting your role, wanting your client mandate. And, you know, to that extent, stay hungry, stay foolish, stay nervous, stay paranoid. And, you know, don't become a nervous wreck at the end of all of that. But, you know, you know, take the good parts of all of that and always stay agile. And, uh, you know, you, you'll always keep, keep reinventing yourself and come out with good outcomes. Brilliant advice. Um, but so I think I would be remiss without asking, how do you maintain a work-life balance I, um, and investment banking? And how has that changed over the years? Because as you mentioned, you have a daughter and also run a family. Um, so how have you maintained work-life balance? And what advice do you have to young people about work-life balance? So I think very important to have work-life balance because if you have a unidimensional career, it just sort of, you know, will drain you out eventually. So one thing is, uh, you know, to have people around you as you get older, all of you will get older and have children, etc. India is great for people, for women who's supportive, they really come out and support my parents, my in-laws really supported my journey when my kid was young and I was the CEO of UBS. So, you know, my husband used to call them mums on wheels because they would always fly down from Delhi for any time that, you know, Tara and I, we needed them. So I think build an ecosystem around you, which supports you, which helps you build friends around you, which prop you up, have friends that are not from your own community, you know, don't have friends who are all finance and who only talk investment banking, have friends from diverse fields, they put things in perspective, they make you realize that, you know, it's not the be all and end all if you lost a mandate or didn't get a particular job you were aiming for. So keep perspective. And, you know, I think that's what keeps you in a good frame of mind. And, you know, otherwise, we all just become extremely unidimensional, we just focus on that one thing, our job, our next promotion, our next... but, you know, just take it easy, life's a marathon, it's not a sprint, right? So if you miss a promotion, it'll happen six months later, right? Just believe in yourself. Don't get over overawed by it because it then plays with your mind. Uh, and uh, yeah, and enjoy yourself and have a hobby. I think, you know, all of us, as I said, you know, uh, we don't invest enough in life skills. So go out there, have a hobby, whether it's a sport, whether it's dance, whether it's singing. I know your generation does a lot of that. You know, you guys have a lot of skills from school itself. You develop that. So keep keep up with that. Don't lo lose that. Don't lose that that skill, which you can, you know, you can just go out there and play the guitar or the violin or sing or dance and forget everything about work. 
it, it, it'll, it'll make you come back so much more re-energized. Go out and talk to friends who have nothing to do with your business. Again, and something that will make you uh, come back and have, be re-energized and always keep your loved ones with you because they're the ones who not only tell you the good stuff, they tell you the bad stuff too, right? They're the only ones who will tell you, look, you're becoming too pompous, too arrogant, too foolish. You know, They'll tell you how they see it. Others won't, right? People who, are, who you move, meet in your corporate journey won't tell you all that. They, it's, it's, they don't have the stakes in it. So keep your childhood friends with you. Keep your parents with you. My mom always, even now, my mom always scolds me and says, oh my God, that day you were looking tired or your you know, sorry wasn't good enough. And that's good because who else will tell me? <laughs> so I think, I think carry your loved ones with you. I completely agree. I think that's very important. So I think we're going to start with some of the questions because the chat box is going crazy. So I'm sure. going to start with that. Um, so a question from Ishita is uh, based on what something you said. So she said, working in a global company might land you a job somewhere else in the world, like you said. Uh, and have you worked anywhere else? I know you've worked in London. Um, and if yes, how different was that experience working abroad as compared to working in India? So I worked in Hong Kong, Singapore and London and also, you know, the deals that I transaction I worked in on took me for months to other geographies. It, it, the business is the same, you know, I, you're actually just doing the same business in terms of uh, analyzing balance sheets, etc. I think the clients are very different, you know, obviously culturally a UK or a US or a Asia or a, is very different in China, you have to be very mindful of different things. India, you have to be mindful of different things. Age is a big, a big thing. We respect age in India, UK, US can be a little more irreverential. I remember once when I went into uh, into Singapore uh, uh, for a meeting, I, I didn't realize that, you know, you give your business card with both hands. I hadn't learned that. So I gave it in the usual Indian ways. And I, I remember I got pulled up by my boss and said, you know, that's actually a rude thing to do. So you learn these things only when you go into these cultures, right? You read it somewhere, you forget about it. While if I go into the U.S., if you're giving out a business card, people just chuck it across the conference room and say, these are for you, right? They're so relaxed about it. So, you know, things like that, culturally different things you learn. And I, and I loved it because I think I love meeting diverse people. I love the fact that my life's a melting pot and, you know, you can meet an American or a UK person or, a, or an Asian person and, you know, work with them. It teaches you to be a lot more patient, right? It improves your communication skills. So, of course, it's different. Every country is different. Every country's skills are different. And, and you just have to decide whether that's something you're doing or you like being in, you know, in your own Indian ecosystem. Having said that, I always came back, which says that I did love my ecosystem the most. But you definitely got to experience a lot of cultures. And just on the word culture, uh, how, how do you select a firm uh, based on the culture of the firm? Because I think even if you might like the job, I think culture is really one of the main deciding factors for staying in a job. So what advice do you have to young people about um, just the culture of the firm they're working in and what they should do if they don't like it. Very important. Um, Malvika, it is the most important thing as you, uh, I think you picked on the most important, whoever asked you this question picked on the most important thing, must do your homework. And I think that's where the earlier point you and I discussed about a network is important because through the network, you can actually find out, you know, the website, et cetera, can make, can you, every, all the boxes can be ticked, right? It's probably done by some HR person and all the right things about we are diverse, you know, we are respect flexible working hours, you can work from home, all those things are said, right? But the reality you only know when you talk to people who are inside that organization and do your homework don't get carried away by big brands and say oh my god this is a big us firm i always wanted to work for it find out how they are in india how what are their hr policies how do they treat the people how the leader is there right because eventually in the early part of your career, all that is really important, right? I mean, I think I, a lot of people ask me that how come you're working so many years later? And I think I lucked out because I had very good bosses in the first five, 10 years. And then it makes all the difference, right? It doesn't matter if my first brand was, first firm was ANZ and wasn't uh, a Morgan Stanley. It's just, it's, it's, the, it's the nurturing and the kind of bosses I had, which made me the person I am. So do that homework, find out the culture, very important. Especially, you know, if you're more of a team person, if you're not someone who's just out there and saying, I'm the best and you know the rest of the people are like that you're going to get crushed you're going to be unhappy and you're going to not be able to get the credit that you you should deserve if you're really good at your work uh, and on the other hand if you're the kind of person who's really out there and you know pushy and can really put out yourself in a in the right way then maybe go and join a firm like that but you must do your homework I completely agree with you in the first four five years because those are critical years that is what will set you on a trajectory of growth or then you know pull you out of the work system uh, in an extreme case. Perfect. That's a really informative answer for us. Um, so a question from another Malvika in the in the uh, Zoom Zoom chat. So how, do you have any books, book recommendations for investment banking or finance in general that a young person could read? 
at the oh, start. Plenty. Uh, start with the corporate finance books. If you're not a finance person, you know, that's the most important thing. Uh, don't focus too much on management books initially. Read books like Outliers. There's, there's a, there's, but in the first five, seven years, focus more on books which relate to corporate finance and honing those skills of yours as opposed to leadership and management. A, that you learn by symbiosis, by being in, you know, good organizations and, you know, you can after five, the fifth or seventh year do that first five, seven years, just continue to invest in yourself, in your skills, in, you know, continuously upgrading your skills. So go out there to a bookshop or to, you know, online and see what are the books which teach you more skills, you know, maybe books on certain industries, right? How certain sectors work, how is IT working? How is tech working? Imbibe those books, read those books and don't worry about the very fancy books, you know, written by CEOs of big banks because there's a lot of time to read those and you'll actually appreciate those more four, five years into working. First five years, just invest in yourself. Just be a sponge. Keep soaking in through books, through mentors, through leaders, through team, through team, uh, team members. Just soak in more and more information and knowledge. Okay, um, wonderful. So another one is from someone I think who's an MBA fresher. So he's asking, how do I make my career as an investment bank, uh, in investment banking as an MBA fresher? I don't know if there's a direct answer to that, but... Well, I think you. in most MBA schools, uh, there'll be banks, investment banks coming in to hire, right? So um, I guess, you know, you should just apply to those investment banks. A uh, lot of the business, most investment banks go into business schools to hire. If you, And if he's an MBA, I'm sure some investment bank or the other will definitely come there and hire him. Otherwise, just reach out to people through LinkedIn, etc. right? If you are so keen on it and and uh, try that track. But hopefully, I, I, I hope that the uh, investment bank's coming to his, uh, coming to his uh, business school and, you know, he gets in through that. Okay, great. Um, so someone asked, Nigda asked, um, do you have any advice for your younger self or something you wish you knew when you started out? So uh, this is a question that has a different answer every five to 10 years. 10 years ago, Malvika, if you'd asked me this question, I would say, yes, I should have done this. I should have taken that job offer when I had it and I should have gone to London and I should have had two kids and I should have done. But now I don't think so. Now I think my life is my journey. My journey is my own. And I think, and as I mentioned before, I, you know, I am what I am through all of my failures, setbacks and successes. And I'm, am I happy with where I am today? I think I am. So 10 years ago, it would have been a very different answer, right? But today I think, no, I think everyone's journey is their own journey. It's unique. Don't worry about the other person and think that person's gone off onto another, oh my God, more promotions, more this thing. This is how your journey was meant to be. And just love it. You know, if you, at least I think, you know, I'm blessed to be here I, where, I, where I am. I mean, am I fortunate? Yes. Could I have done more? Maybe. Who knows? Do I regret it? You know, certain choices I made to slow myself down maybe at some points in my career? No, not at all. Okay, wonderful. Um, so some one question about leadership. Do you think it's acquired or do you think it's a natural quality? A bit of both, I think. It is some people, some people are just natural leaders, right? You can see it from the childhood that, you know, when you're playing in a little, when little four, five-year-olds are playing and there's one person who's this natural leader. So yes, of course, there are some who just have a natural leader, a natural leaders and build it as a muscle memory. But can you acquire it in your, on, a, uh, on the job? Of course you can. And to that extent, I think what becomes relevant is that you must love your job, right? Because I mean, then, then, then you give it your 200%. You're willing to lead. You're willing to take ownership. You're willing to make the right and wrong decisions and take ownership for it. So it's a bit of both. If you're blessed with it naturally, great. If you're blessed with being, it's, it's like, you know, I, can, you, can you be a good debater? Can you be a good speaker? Of course, some people are born with it, but can you build it? Of course you can. I, I, I wouldn't worry about it that, oh my God, you know, in college, this person is just such a good debater and a manner and he's speaking so well and he looks like he's, a, no, not at all. I think you can very well acquire it. And to that extent, good mentors, et cetera, are important who, you know, really help you to push yourself and blossom. Okay. Um, so another question is about how has technology invested, uh, impacted investment banking and uh, what are some technolo technological skills that one should acquire um, when, when they're young for investment banking careers? So I think uh, before uh, this started, Madhura and I was just telling each other how bad our technology skills are. So I'm not the right person to answer it. But I think what technology has done is that it has changed 
uh, business models, right? As I said before. So basically, you need to be really alert and agile on your job because, you know, a company that you evaluated four years ago, the business model may be totally irrelevant today because, you know, somebody just come in and disrupted the whole business model. We talked about how OYO's dis- disrupted the hotel business model or, you know, Uber's disrupted the whole car business. business. So I think that's what is done. It's changed your client's ecosystem so much. Electric vehicles coming in, you know, do they make... Uh, company make uh, commercial vehicle companies redundant renewables does it make thermal and coal uh, electricity companies redundant so i think what what is done is that it's changed your ecosystem a lot and to, it goes back to the earlier point you asked on what you should be reading so you need to keep continuously reading about your industries because you when you go in to meet your clients they know it all right they're living in those industries and if you are coming and you are clueless on what's happening to them, then you know that then you're not going to be able to win their business. So that's what's changed a lot is the fact that you people have to continuously upgrade your skills and continuously learn about new businesses because of technology. Great advice. So someone asked about um, sub, the economics as a subject um, and what role it plays in investment banking. And you having studied economics, I think would be perfect to answer this because a lot of young people are um, you know, confused about taking economics in undergrad. Uh, on finance. So do you have any opinions on that? Yeah, so I think economics, look, economics, finance, all these are good degrees to have in undergrad. I think, it, do I recommend do, going down my track and being a, just an economist? No, I think you must acquire an MBA degree or a CA degree if you want to thrive in investment banking. I think economics or finance both hold you in good stead because economics is really important too. It teaches you the more macro aspects, right, of an economy, et cetera. Malvika, you're doing it so you would understand it, right? And that's very important too in investment banking. You can't, while you have to deep dive into the micro, you also always have have to keep the macro in perspective. So finance will teach you how to read a balance sheet, etc. But e- economics will teach you the bigger picture on what impacts these companies, what's happening globally, what is the, what are the impacts of labor, uh, capital in an economy. Both these degrees in undergrad are perfect if you want to take an investment banking degree, uh, journey. But you must upgrade, must invest in yourself two years into uh, in, into your undergrad in a in a postgrad degree, which is more finance oriented. Got it. Um, so someone asked, do you think there's a c- country that is best for investment banking or is it subjective based on the person? India is great. Nothing wrong with India. It's a good industry. So, you know, when I started uh, 28 years ago, India was a very small investment banking business. It was basically just government, some government companies, Reliance, Tata's, Birla's, that's it. Today, it's a deep, in, a deep uh, investment banking market. So if you want to stay in India, then it's a great market. If you want a more international business, then maybe you want to start in US or or UK, which are the other two, which are the two big finance hubs, right? A New York or a London, or maybe the West Coast if tech is what excites you. Uh, so I think uh, US, UK, and of course India, because you know it's always your country, and you'll always have a natural advantage in India, right? As right. when you're going to clients as an Indian, you'll always have a natural advantage. So if that's what appeals to you, stay in India. If you want to go and learn more, uh, you know, more you know, the upgraded skills, then probably go to the US or UK because the, you know, the markets are so much more advanced there. Okay. Um, so a lot of people join investment banking uh, thinking that they're going to move to private equity or asset management, but that's not something you did. Uh, what do you think about that transition career path and people who join investment banking with that mindset or vision in, in, in their head? So I think, look, private equity for your generation is what investment banking was for my generation, right? I mean, every yeah. 20 years, there's a new trend. And today it's all about, I want to be in PE. I want to be in PE. It's yeah. a great place to be. You put capital to work. You actually work with very smart entrepreneurs. You help them grow their business, right? Because you pick, if you put capital into it, you basically nurture that business along with the founder. Very exciting business, I think. Uh, I, I like it. Uh, and I think if people want to transition to it, it's great. I mean, I think... Is investment banking just a means to a private equity? I don't think you can have a great career in investment banking too. But is private equity a career I endorse for you for the younger people? Absolutely, because I think how it differs is that in investment banking, you just, after you've done the tra- transaction, you move on to the next transaction. In private equity, you actually stay with the company. So you learn a lot more of the company because you actually become an insider into the company. So to that extent, you probably have a more in-depth knowledge of companies. So private equity is a great journey. And you know, uh, today, India, a lot of private equity have all uh, set up shop in India. And you know, there's $200 billion yeah. of private equity capital that's come into India. So it's a, bit, it's a, it's a very rich um, uh, industry in India. They're all hiring a lot of young females female talent. So definitely a career path that I would endorse for the young women out here. And the men. But, <laughs> that's very insightful. Um, so I guess one, one of the questions we got is more personal. So 
have you ever thought of starting a business who oh, i have right i start, set up ubs i set up molis i think of these as businesses of my own <laughs> uh, so and, i love uh, that that's what i liked it i i think i like entrepreneur but i like it in a little bit of structure and i think that's what a ubs or a molis gave me it gave me that structure of a global organization but you know i set it up uh, with a laptop in uh, and and my assistant natty who's on the call the two of us set up ubs the two of us set up molis so so i think i've done it amazing <laughs> um so yeah ubs is a swiss bank molis is uh, american so is there something you had to learn extra about you know these countries and how did you do that and did you do it while you were setting the businesses up or um how did you basically land this opportunity no i think they are both global businesses and global businesses think very uniformly so i don't think from ubs to molis i had to learn anything about oh this is how the americans work versus this is how ubs uh, the swiss work because these were both these are both very global firms right. so i don't think there was any such learning on the job of course initially when i came in you know uh, into in my first few years the whole the whole aspect of working in a global organization is different right because i i'd had all my education in india so to that extent there was learning on the job and all the things that you and i discussed culturally on how to behave in a singapore or a shanghai or a new york or a london all of that you learned but i think after once you learn all that and it's sort of i don't think between these organizations if you switch or if you switch careers from investment banking to private equity you will have to do any relearning i don't think so okay um so we have a lot of i we're running short on time but we have a lot of questions about uh, just coming out as a fresher after masters um and i basically i'm going to consolidate all these questions into one if i can uh, sure. what do you think about you know doing a financial modeling course or certification as compared to uh, having a ca degree or an mba degree or something like that or do you think that having that ca or mba is pivotal to joining this um, making your mark in this uh, industry so i think it helps because it's a competitive market i think it helps having the right degrees i wouldn't uh, discount the right degrees after that you know it's really what you make of yourself once you get in you know whether you're an economist or whether you're just an undergrad a lot of the people in my team who are who haven't done a post graduate degree are act, are actually doing better than the ones who have post graduate degrees so after that it's you know really the initiative you take of learning on the job etc malvika but the initial bit does it help to have the degrees of course it does right it gives you a head start over the other but after a certain point it's what you make of your career you know you can only ride on your degrees for your first job or your second job after that nobody cares i don't think madra and i in all the hiring we've done had our you know worried about what degree it's about the initiative you take the personality you have the confidence you have you know the drive you have that's what weighs in much more than your degrees right we had another question about what are some qualities don't that don't go redundant i think that's kind of the answer as well um yes. so priscilla asked how do we gain practical knowledge and experience in corporate finance and investment banking while still be in college uh so i think while being in a college what you can do is to take internships if you know to see if this is a career that excites you you know everyone's happy to take uh, undergrads as interns today do that shadow a ceo a lot of business schools have the shadow a ceo program so shadow a ceo for a couple of days see if you see you know you'll get a nice birds eye view on whether this is a career that you want to take and and other thing is attend webinars like this you know where you learn from people uh first hand i think all of that i think all of you because of the amount of information that's available online can actually make a pretty calculated assessment of whether this is a career that you want to as opposed to you know when madhura and i started we just you know i think we're i'm accidental banker i think madhura also must have just had you know we learn along the way but i don't think you need to do that all of you i think you can pretty much through hands on experience by yourself and through you know uh, exp- uh, shared experience of other people decide whether this is a career for you or not right yeah i've heard my parents say so many times you have so many options um, but okay we're going to end now because we're right on time at 7:30 i'm sorry for the questions that i wasn't able to get but i tried my best to consolidate like two or three questions together if they were con- sort of asking the same thing so with that thank you everyone for joining us and of course thank you manisha ma'am um for taking the time out this friday evening and i'm just going to hand it over to Ma- madhura ma'am as well uh, just for some closing and thank you notes Thank you so much all of you and Manisha absolutely wonderful i think i don't remember when last i enjoyed myself so much in a webinar and uh, i think some of the stories you said were really 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 enjoyable uh, 
I just uh, wanted to leave you all all with this one thought that uh, you know we have mentors like Manisha and uh, and like her there are many other wonderful mentors on aspire for her so in case you all want all of those unanswered questions to be answered all you need to do is just sign up be a part of our platform and uh, just tell us who you want to be mentored by so we have really wonderful mentors and thank you to all the other wonderful mentors who have all signed in here today to listen to you uh, so thank thanks a lot uh, you know have a great weekend and uh, look forward to seeing you next month thank, thank you. you thanks madhura thank you for having me and malvika really enjoyed my session with you good luck in your life journey likewise malvika. thank you thank you bye 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 everyone Did we manage to go live everywhere? Yeah, it's still live actually. Yeah, Do you want to stop oh, that? Stop yeah. yeah, stop the recording.